What's up guys, this is Baker with Unit Precision, and in this video we're going to go over how to disassemble and reassemble your uh, bolt for our true bolt action ARs, whether that be for a cleaning or for maintenance uh, items. So let's get into it. Okay, so first things first uh, are the tools you're going to need. Uh, you're going to need a 16th uh, punch or 1.5 millimeter, and 1 8th punch or 3 millimeter, a small flathead screwdriver, and then of course a hammer. Uh, the screwdriver is going to be to uh, put the extractor claw in and out of the bolt, so it needs to fit in that width of the bolt. So something small and flat that will fit in that little groove right there. Okay. Um, and then if you have bought a maintenance kit and you're replacing all the components of your bolt, uh, we'll go ahead and go over what comes in that little kit. So it would come in a bag like this, and it does come with instructions. Okay, so it will come with a replacement firing pin, a firing pin, a uh, retaining roll pin, an ejector, ejector spring, ejector cross pin, and then your extractor claw, extractor spring, and detent. Okay, uh, so that's what's going to come in that re replacement or maintenance kit. Um, and so uh, to get started, um, we generally use a bench vise with some soft jaws to hold the bolt in place. Uh, so we'll go and do that next. All right, so let's start with the removal of the firing pin. Uh, that's going to be at the rear of the bolt. Uh, to do that, you're going to remove this roll pin at the rear. It's in line with the uh, bolt knob or bolt handle. Um, the, the firing pin is not spring loaded, okay, so there's nothing to worry about flying out at you or, or losing or getting shot across the room. So you're going to take your uh, eighth punch and just punch that roll pin through. It is not directional. You can go left or right, doesn't matter. Uh, so go ahead and punch that out and then you can slide the firing pin out the rear. And there you go. Okay, now that the firing pin's out, the next step is to remove the extractor claw and then the ejector. Okay, so the easiest way is to start with the extractor claw. And all you're going to do is take your flathead screwdriver, cover the extractor with your thumb, and push it towards the center of the bolt. Okay, this is under spring tension and there is a detent underneath, so you do not want to just smash it in there because you're going to lose parts across the room. Okay, so kind of cover it with your thumb and then ease this forward. And then once that's off, there you go, you can see the claws off, and then you can see that detent underneath. So go ahead and remove your claw, set it aside, and then you're going to take your detent out. Okay, it does have a little tail on it to keep it inside the spring. If you have an older version of the bolt, this was just a little ball bearing, so you're going to be a little bit more careful, because that ball bearing is, uh, it'll, it'll take off an orbit. Okay, so there's your detent, and then there is a small spring inside that hole. Uh, the easiest way to grab that is to get your uh, 16th punch stick it in the hole there and then just kind of lift it out and then set it aside. Uh, the next step would be the e ejector. Okay, uh, It's hard to see I'm sure from this angle but there's a hole that crosses through uh, the bolt. So this punch is representing that where that hole's at. Okay, And it, you kind of want to make sure you keep that angle right. Um, in any case this can be a little bit difficult to get out um, but you're going to basically the same thing as the, the rear roll pin. This is not directional. You can go from either direction, uh, punching it out. Uh, I tend to go from the flat side. So if you have the bolt in your in your, in your your vise, you'll see that there's a little bit more of a gap on one side than the other. Uh, but basically, you're going to take that punch and just tap it all the way through. Uh, again, this is also under spring tension. So you don't want to just punch it through and then yank your punch out because this will take off an outer orbit as well. Okay, So tap it through. Um, a good idea sometimes if it's kind of jammed up in there is to take your screwdriver or another punch and give this some downward pressure. It's kind of hard to do with only two hands, but uh, we'll go ahead and tap this out. And again, you don't want to you want to get that angle right. Look at that hole and uh, line up your your punch because you don't want to be putting your punch this way because you're going to be punching the wrong direction or punching it this way. You know, this thing goes right through here. There's basically a little C notch in that ejector. Okay, so you're going to punch it straight through. See it coming out that side, and now this ejectors come up a little bit. So you have more tension on there. 
Okay, there goes the pin, and then we're gonna slowly cover this ejector with our thumb and back that punch out, and then ease up, and that ejector will come out. Okay, now you can see the notch I'm talking about. That's where that pin rides. Okay, so you have the hole here, that punch, or that pin, that pin runs right through this notch and out you know, to the other side. Okay, so this is the angle you wanna to, wanna to keep as you're punching through this. Now the reverse is true, also when you're installing this, you wanna make sure that you reinsert this ejector straight. You don't want to have it canted like this because as you push that pin through, now you're gonna start eating and chewing at the edge of this and it's gonna bind things up, okay? So you wanna be very cognizant of keeping this thing in line, okay? So pull that out. A lot of times the spring will come with it. If not, stick your punch down there, scoop it out. Set those to the side. Uh, last part is uh, if you're going to uh, remove your bolt knob, uh, you can do that as well. It is the standard uh, thread pitch for bolt action bolt knobs is 516, 524. So if you want to run a, an aftermarket bolt knob, you can do that as well. We put a mild thread locker on there. So if you were to do that, the best way to do it is with your soft jaws here, loosen it up, put the bolt knob in there, tighten it back up. All right, and then righty tighty lefty loosey. So let's see, I'm upside down. I gotta go this way, right? Yep, there we go. And then thread it on out. So if you wanna do an aftermarket bolt knob, there you go. Put some, clean this up, put some fresh mild thread locker on there, and then reinstall your bolt, put it back in the, or your bolt knob, whether it's the, the factory one or an aftermarket, put it in the jaws, and then, or actually put it on the bolt, tighten it, finger tighten it, hand tighten it, and then put your knob in the soft jaws, and then crank it down okay so that's your full disassembly okay so if you're replacing all your components say you've shot this thing out this is what you're gonna get down to and so now we've got a completely stripped bolt uh, so you can uh, clean your bolt do a deep clean on there or you can uh, reinstall your maintenance kit if you if you uh, shot those springs and stuff out which is gonna be quite a few rounds honestly uh, we typically don't recommend anybody tearing these things down this far uh, your basic cleaning we would recommend removing the extractor claw and components as well as the firing pin those are the two places that get uh, get grimed up the most um, so that's about as far as we would normally take this but uh, now you have an idea how it goes all the way down to bare bones so now we'll go ahead and do the reverse and, and install everything all right so we're going to rebuild this bolt now um, I like to start with the bolt knob don't have to don't have to do it that way but that's the way I like to do it uh, so you clean these threads up and then uh, thread your or screw your bolt knob back on whether it's the stock one or an aftermarket one if you are going to go with an aftermarket knob this is uh, the standard 5 16 by 24 thread pitch so most any of your aftermarket uh, bolt knobs will fit so anyway go ahead and thread that on there spin it on hand tighten it and then then I like to put it in the soft jaws here clamp it down and then give a nice little torque Okay, and that's going to keep it on there nice and nice and tight. Okay, the next, uh, I generally like to do the extractor claw, uh, just because with the ejector out, I have more space on the bolt face to maneuver things and, and move them around, wiggle them around, okay? So first things first is you're going to grab that small spring you removed, or in your maintenance kit, the, the fresh one, okay? And drop it in that hole where, uh, basically, if you got lost, it's that T-notch. There's a T-notch here. That's the hole you're going to put this spring into, the little short guy. And it... Whoop. Be careful. Drop that in there. Just kind of get a little light press. Okay, it doesn't go, it's almost flush with the, the surface. So if your spring disappears, you put it in the wrong hole. <laughs> Bad day. Okay, and then uh, you're going to grab your detent, take that tail, stick it in the hole there. All right, and now you see it's kind of sticking up. And last thing is you're going to grab your extractor claw and uh, basically the large side is going to be down okay so you kind of see it's a an upside down T so the skinny part is up and then the large side is down okay it will only go in one way okay and then obviously the curved part is going to be continuation of this curve of your bolt face okay you don't want it spun around because that wouldn't make any sense okay so basically just drop it on the bolt face there get it close and uh, these little wings right here slide through that T notch this is where your small screwdriver comes into play you're going to take that and cover and press down your detent be careful not to let this thing slip out because it will shoot and hit you right in the face okay it'll shoot out and hit you right in the eye 
you should probably be wearing safety glasses. All right, so uh, depress that with your screwdriver, and then as you slide it back, you slide the extractor claw into place. If you get hung up, press a little bit more, okay, and you hear it click, okay, and you see there's a slight rim here. You know, this this claw should not be flush with that, if it, if the flush of the lug. If it is, you need to push it back in. It means it's kind of bound up, okay. Um, we would recommend a little bit of gun oil uh, lubrication underneath this uh, before you put it back on the gun, okay. But, so basically that's back in. You can give it a push this way. Make sure it's moving just a little bit. You see there's not a whole lot of play in there. Okay, but you don't want to push it and push it this way without supporting on either side because it will come out again. Okay, so make sure it's wiggling around in there. Base is what I'm getting at. Okay, the next thing would be to <coughs> um, install your ejector. Now, generally, I'm going to do this uh, horizontally. Okay, but I'm going to point at some things right now so you can see a little bit better. All right, so you're going to grab that long spring you pulled out, and drop it in there. If you've got an older bolt, these springs are a little bit uh, smaller in the UPR 15s as well as your ejector component itself. Uh, but this is the latest version of the bolt that we've been running for a couple years now. Uh, in any case, you drop that spring in there and then you're going to put your ejector in there. Okay, now like we talked before, uh, you want to keep this in line with this hole, right? So you can see the punch coming through. This C-notch needs to be in line, right? You don't want it to be this way or that way, right? Because where this punch is at is where that roll pin has to go through, okay? So you want to make sure this stays this direction, not tweaked one way or the other, all right? Uh, so you can, if you need to, put a punch on the reverse side to hold it in place. Um, I usually don't do that, don't have to, uh, but we'll get into it next, all right? Let me put this horizontal. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put this in the, the vise here in a second. Now, I want to make note of something. Uh, it's a slight difference, but there is a, like a little bit wider gap between the lugs on one side versus the other. And so I like to work on the, the wider gap side because it's easier to, to tap, that, uh, tap that punch or that pin through. Okay, so we'll go ahead and mount this in the vise. Uh, again, you're going to put your spring in there. All right. And then you're going to make your take your ejector, <clears throat> put that tail down the hole, right? And then as you push this in, you're going to make that, that C-notch, make it line up with that hole, okay? So this is the part where I'm going to cinch it down the vise, right? And this part can be a little tricky. Okay, so you're going to take a punch or that flathead screwdriver again line this bad boy up with that hole and where that channel is at and push it down and you're going to go below the bolt the bolt face right it's going to be you can push it about about halfway down and you can stick your punch through there like see right now you can see i want to go this way push your punch through there so you can see and feel about where that that roll pin is going to go or that drift pin is going to go okay so now Push your punch, take your punch, push that ejector back down, remove your punch, right? Grab your new drift pin, uh, and I stick it in that hole a little bit just to get it started, right? Now, this is important. You want to keep, you don't want this ejector flush with the bolt face. You want to, or not the bolt face, but the, the lugs up here, right? You want to push it down about halfway, right? Because that gives you clearance uh, to get through that C-notch. If you're too high, it won't go through the C-notch. Okay, so one last check. Make sure you're kind of look over it. Make sure that C-notch is going to allow that drift pin to go through. Push it down, almost flush, and then I come back in the hammer and tap that down. Well, this hammer's a, not the optimum, optimum hammer to do this, but... Okay, so now we're three-quarters of the way through. That's enough to retain that ejector. And now you're going to take your smaller punch and hammer and just push that all the way through. Okay, and again, you're going to have it just below the surface. Uh, you know, I don't know, maybe a sixteenth of an inch down in the bolt. Okay, maybe a little bit less actually. All right, so we'll go ahead and take this punch. It's going to be hard to see on camera. But again, you want to keep punching through. Don't get all crazy off angle. slipping because I'm trying to film this and <laughs> I'm 
that at a weird angle. Okay, so now you can see about how much this punch goes in that hole, not a whole lot, all right? So now that that punch is in there, or that pin is in there, you're gonna take your punch and push down on an ejector and make sure it's free moving, that it's not binding up at all. If it's binding up, it means that, that it got twisted while you're installing that pin, and you're gonna wanna punch that pin back out and, and try again, okay? So make sure it's moving freely, it's not binding up, goes all the way down, comes all the way back up by itself. If it does it, you're good to go, and the last step is going to be putting that firing pin back in. All right, so the final step is to install the firing pin back into the bolt. Um, so obviously the bolt is in the uh, vise here again. Uh, go ahead and stick this here through the firing pin channel, and you're going to push up flush. Okay, uh, you want to make sure it's flush because that's where this pin is going to go through. Uh, it's going to catch this notch right here. That's what keeps the firing pin in there. Okay, so you're going to put it flush and then push this pin through. All right. So with the pin in there, go ahead and put your roll pin in the hole here. Now, where this rolls, right, it's got the little lip. You want to put that lip, let me point it up better, this little edge right here, right? You're going to put that edge pointing out, okay? You don't want it this in here. It doesn't ever really bind with the bolt, but uh, I'm OCD and that's how I like to do it, okay? So go ahead and start your roll pin in there. And then put your dad bod belly against the bolt to hold it in place. Kind of tap that bad boy in there. If the firing pin starts to back out, I can't do it because the camera's in the way, but uh, kind of reach your finger across and hold it in, okay? Obviously use a massive hammer that is overkill. And once it's flush, grab your eighth, one eighth uh, inch punch and tap it in just so it's below the surface and you want to, you know, that, that pin centered on either side, okay? All right. And uh, that's it. Your bolt is reassembled, ready to go. Uh, before you stick it back in the gun there, uh, we would recommend uh, lubricating just one component like we talked about earlier do not lubricate the firing pin do not lubricate that firing pin channel the only place that we would recommend lubricating is going to be this e extractor claw so on the outside lip there or the outside edge just drop a little bit of oil in there wiggle this back and forth and you're ready to go okay so that's how you uh, disassemble and reassemble or maintain your uh, bolt for your UPR uh, True Bolt Action AR. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section and please don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe for all future content. Thanks!